Welcome to Culture Screen, where we analyze culture through countdown. This episode is part two of the Samurai Bushiru Code Principles. If you haven't seen part one, I recommend you watch that first. In this video, we will be discussing where the Samurai Bushiru Code Principles originate. We will be looking at the Gunki Monogatari as a genre of Japanese literature as the source for the Bushiru Code. The Gunki Monogatari are war tales or Japanese literature written mostly in the Kamakura and Muromachi periods. The Kamakura period lasted from 1185 to 1333 and the Muromachi period lasted from 1336 to 1573. The Gunki Monogatari is a Japanese genre that focuses on the civil wars that took place between 1156 and 1568. The most popular war tale of the Gunki Monogatari is the Heiki Monogatari, an epic account of the war between the Tara and Minamoto clans. In the tale of the Heiki, the powerful Tara clan defeat the Minamoto in 1611. It is mostly a samurai epic focusing on Minamoto Yoshinaka. After Yoshinaka dies, Minamoto Yoshitsune is the protagonist. Minamoto Yoshitsune was a military commander and samurai. At one point, his older brother, Minamoto no Yorutumu, falsely accuses Yoshitsune of treachery. While reading the tale of Haiki, we are presented with stories and lessons that focus on warrior culture. This focus on warrior culture would lay the foundation for Bushido. In the stories, the authors of the Gunki Monogatari would sympathize with the warriors and moralize the decisions they made as well. The Gunki Monogatari tales also highlighted and emphasized the warrior ethic. The first rule in this warrior's ethic was loyalty in the face of death. The ability of the warrior to have loyalty was then tied to the samurai's concept of personal honor. This code also rejected compassion if it conflicted with duty. The warrior's ethic also included what could be done after a battle. For example, cutting off the heads of dead enemies to parade as trophies became an unhonorable thing to do and went against the warrior's ethic. The warrior ethic also had a set course of action warriors were expected to fulfill regardless of personal beliefs. This is captured vividly in the Heiki Monogatari through the tale of Atsumori. When warriors would meet, they would often encounter each other face to face. Afterwards, a brief dialogue would begin where each warrior would identify themselves and their familial connections and accomplishments as well. The Gunki Monogatari also discussed Amida Buddhism and mainly focused on the concept of karma. The influence Amida Buddhism had on these war tales or Gunki Monogatari was so crucial that the Heiki Monogatari is still considered a Buddhist sermon. The Gunki Monogatari served to show us that there indeed was a Bushido code type of warrior ethic present well before the 19th century in Japan. By looking into these stories and the Gunki Monogatari as a genre, we see the cultural traces of a loose warrior code that was part of life in the Japanese Middle Ages. Inazo Natobi wrote Bushido the Soul of Japan in 1899. In this book, Natobe described the samurai as noble, almost majestic warriors rather than soldiers and the real harsh life that they went through. We often overlook the Shamabara rebellion where Christians were trying to rebel and samurai were used to squash the rebellion and Christianity beginning in the 1600s in Japan. The book of Natobe was so popular and successful that President Roosevelt purchased multiple copies for his friends and family. Samurai did in fact use firearms and cannons as early as the 1500s. All the primary resource information we have on the infamous ninja are from the Edo period, which was a time that came after ninjas were even utilized. Ninja, as a word, only exists beginning in the 20th century. The kanji was probably read as shinobi, not ninja. In Sun Tzu's Art of War, chapter 13 is titled The Art of Spies. In this chapter, we read on how shinobi were to be used as spies primarily. There is actually no solid evidence that anyone in history was actually killed by a shinobi. The shinobi were actually stealthy samurai in disguise. Sometimes they worked together on jobs, but there was never a point in history where ninjas went up against the samurai class. That is a myth. Shinobi were actually spies, not assassins. 
in the mid Edo period is where the shinobi was reimagined as a shiryuken and mask wielding assassin. In 1967, 007's You Only Live Once also repopularized this cultural representation of the shinobi as a masked group of assassins. We upload new videos every week, so subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to hit the like button as well. Click the notification bell to be notified of when we upload these videos. See you on the next episode of Culture Screen.